Hello, I'm Ashley from the Estuary Management Team here at Central Coast Council. My team and I are committed to working hard to protect and restore our beautiful waterways. We're part of the community and we love nature, so we're working really hard for the benefit of the environment and our community. Because this is such a beautiful area to live in, the population of the Central Coast is growing and all of this pressure from development is making it really hard for our natural areas to thrive. Not only are we contributing lots of pollution and sediment into the lake system through things like erosion and this contaminated stormwater runoff, but we're also disturbing the processes that would help us to be able to fix those things. So in our efforts to restore our waterway, we're looking back to nature to try and reinstate her solutions. Did you know that once upon a time, the water in Tugra Lakes was much clearer and seagrass grew all throughout the middle of the lake in the deeper water? But what happened was that farming and development all throughout the catchment caused erosion and sediment to come down into the lake, which made the water turbid. And that meant that the seagrass couldn't get enough sunlight to survive and it had to move towards the shallower waters on the edges of the lake. Seagrass is really important habitat for wildlife like our endangered white seahorse. And its roots stabilise the soil at the bottom of the lake, holding it in place so that wind and waves don't stir it up, which would make the water murky. Like all plants, the leaves of the seagrass plant eventually die and fall off, and this is called rack. Now, nature has a pretty cool solution to dealing with these dead leaves. The wind blows the rack to the edge of the lake and up onto the shallow, sandy foreshore. The rack would then use the salt marsh plants like a clothesline to dry out in the air and the sun. When the leaves break down out of water in this way, it's called aerobic decomposition and the nutrients get fed back into the ground to fertilise the plants. However, decades of foreshore development and erosion around Tugra Lakes has destroyed the gently sloping foreshore and salt marsh around much of the lakes. And the result is stinky. When the dead seagrass leaves are blown to a modified or eroded shoreline, they become stuck, trapped in the water to break down in a process called anaerobic decomposition, which leads to unpleasant smells and is a factor that contributes to the development of black ooze. At Council, we're trying to relieve some of the pressure that we put on Tugger Lakes as a community and trying to improve the health of our estuary. We use specialised equipment like this to collect as much floating rack as we possibly can without destroying the seagrass underneath. But with 70 k's of foreshore and some pretty tricky to access areas, it's a massive undertaking. So we're also trying to reinstate natural rack drying processes, letting nature do what it does best. And to do that, we have to restore the natural foreshores and rehabilitate the native vegetation on it. Salt marsh. When we're referring to salt marsh, we're not talking about one single plant. We're talking about an entire plant community made up of dozens of different types of species. Salt marsh is low growing, it's salt tolerant, and it thrives in the low elevations all around the lakes. Rehabilitation is done in two ways here on the Tugger Lakes. We can do it passively, in that we simply remove the things in the environment that hinder salt marsh growth, like weeds, or human encroachment or mowing, we're trying to provide an ideal environment for salt marsh to re-establish by itself. Or we can do it actively. Where we do this is in more heavily modified shorelines and is a more drastic approach where we regrade foreshores and actually replant with locally sourced salt marsh species. Salt marsh are fragile and they don't like being hit by waves. So one of the first things we do is we build into the design or out in front energy dissipation boulders, which dampen the wave action, prevent against erosion or damage to the site. The process starts by bringing in soils that match the structure of the existing soils. Machinery is used to level the ground to a very specific gradient and coir logs are added for stability and protection. Rack mulch is then spread over the whole site around 10 to 20 centimetres thick to assist in starting the natural process for nutrient cycling. 
This rack has been collected locally by council. Coir mesh is laid on top and is secured in place, ready for the salt marsh plants. The young tube stock are positioned in clusters through holes in the mesh and they are cared for by watering and weeding until they become independent and self-sustaining. Our salt marsh plants are grown from locally collected seeds and cuttings, so they're genetically suited to the local conditions. We choose specific species for the low, mid and high marsh zones, with species like the salt-tolerant, water-loving beaded samphire, which prefers the low marsh zone, and sedges and rushes, the mid and high marshes. Sadly, salt marsh vandalism is an ongoing issue, with lawnmowers being used to mow over the salt marsh plants, destroying all the hard work put into restoring what is not only an endangered ecological community, but also one of the best filters and solutions for a cleaner, healthier lake. You can help by making sure never to mow all the way to the edge of our waterways. Leaving a nice big buffer zone of native vegetation with deep roots will help prevent erosion and subsequent rack buildup, contributing to a cleaner, clearer waterway. You can also join one of our environmental volunteer programs or spread the word and become an advocate for the protection and restoration of seagrass and salt marsh so that we can come together as a community to help protect and restore our beautiful waterways.